And that also brings me to another point. The majority of people who make their living in some way off of their physique or their performance, the vast majority are on drugs. Even though the majority of those people who are on the drugs are claiming natural, and I don't care whether they're a YouTube figure or a magazine writer or a fitness guru who puts out articles and sells programs, not all of them, but the majority of people who are making their living off of their physique or their athletic performance are on drugs. And it's been that way for a long, long time. And so that's one of the other things to consider is that if they're getting results, fast results and fantastic results off of methods that don't work very well for naturals and the science shows that they're inefficient, then it's very obvious that their drugs are playing a role. And it's not to say that some of these things won't work, but you gotta look at some of the stuff in the bro science. A lot of the stuff in the bro science is actually based off of good ideas. A lot of it works, but the ideas behind why it works have been misrepresented because the people don't understand the science. For example, I'll just give you guys a quick example. The high frequency six meal a day thing, a lot of people who swear by it, they claim it speeds up metabolism, it's more anabolic and all of that. Well, we know none of that's true. So why does it work for a lot of people? Well, because for some people and not everybody, a higher meal frequency gives them more energy. If you have more energy, you can train harder in the gym, you can get better results. If you have more energy, you're gonna burn more calories when you cut. For some people, it's more satiating to eat a lot of smaller meals spaced out throughout the day, and if that's you, then you're probably gonna eat less total calories when you're trying to lose fat. That's going to result in you possibly gaining more muscle when bulking, and possibly losing more fat when cutting but it wasn't a result of a change in metabolism. It wasn't a result in a change of net protein synthesis and protein turnover like a lot of the bro science presents it as. It's individual satiation and energy factors. It has nothing to do with the other things. It doesn't give you direct results. It gives you potentially indirect results. So a lot of the bro science isn't bad and for a lot of people it might actually be an optimal way to do things. Some of these things are presented but not for everybody, and the reasons behind why people think it works is often misrepresented and incorrect. And so that's what a lot of this dilemmas and debates comes down to. And the thing is with a lot of the bro science, it's not to say that you can't achieve fantastic results using a lot of it, it's that a lot of it incorporates methods and confusions that are based upon really bad science and bad ideas that if you didn't incorporate those things, you still would have gotten the same results. And that's where a lot of it creates a problem is that it creates unnecessary confusions. You know, just like things like tracking the glycemic index of your car, so we know that plays zero role in body composition. So had you eaten a higher glycemic index carbs on the exact same type of meal plan and the same type of macros and calories, you would have gotten the same results. So the guy who did the bro thing still got results. But he would have gotten the same results had he done something, taken one of those elements out. and Something like the glycemic index and made it different, he would have gotten the same results. So there you have it, guys. It's an issue of statistical difference because the bro science guys vastly outnumber the science guys. So therefore, since far more people use that, you're going to see more success stories that way because... People who train hard will generally get some degree of success. People who are disciplined and train hard will usually get results eventually, even if their methods aren't fantastic. So if 95% of people are using that method and only 5% are using a method that's only slightly better, then obviously you're going to see more success stories from which you use more likely. And the other thing that it comes down to is that, uh, again, a lot of the professionals and gurus who are promoting this stuff don't actually know the science, they don't know how this stuff works in naturals, and they're using quite a few drugs to get their results. And that's something that I'm big on myself. I'm at least honest about this sort of thing. And I do wish a lot more of these gurus would come out and just be honest about their drug use. But in the world we live in, maybe that's wishful thinking. Alright guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you next time.